Okay, continuing with this experience, for want of calling it anything else. Um, all right, so I've added my little torus, my donut to the front. I've got my fuselage, um, which I should actually probably go around the naming, and I need to join the two together to create a compound object. Or in this case, it's actually um, one object that has all the bits. So there's a couple of choices at this point, and I'm, I'm just going to go with the easiest option, which is to join them. Object, where's the join marker? There, join, or control J. And the two things become the same object. I'm going to label this aircraft fuselage. Uh, and I will attach my two wings to it and all that sort of stuff when I get there later. Body cube, what's it? Oh, that's the bad version. Which looks, yeah. As they say, bad. Better have a look side on. Uh, just to make sure it's all good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of a stuff up to it, but anyhow. Actually, I'll take it back a couple of steps and just work on that torus bit. So getting those inner circles, scaling again, just to, and in the y direction, because it's green line, just to get the curve more accurate and grab in the y direction to pull it back. So the, it roughly matches up, so I scale y again, just to, that should be pretty good. And all scale. Then select the other bit, Control J to join. It's all the same thing, and that is my aircraft fuselage. Now, the naming convention I'm using here with all this sort of stuff is I'm labeling what it is, then the part of what it is. So this should actually be aircraft.wing.middle, or actually bottom, um, and then wing.top. And all that will form my the single object that is uh, what we're looking at. Now, the fuselage here, if I just do it, that's pretty good. It's still got the mirror modifier part as part of it, so what that means is I can actually just go here and delete that chunk of vertices and it all works pretty well. Now, what I've purposely done here is that on this front loop there are 36 connections and on this top loop there are only 32 uh, and we want to join the two loops together so that's going to pose a little bit of a problem for us but first up uh, I'll select I'm going to select that inner loop I'm going to extrude it and then I'm going to get it to lock towards the center so scale zero and then grab that they all touch and I'm going to make sure that every single of the vertices are actually oh, I forgot what one it is mesh clean up uh, it should be it was clean up yesterday oh kefuddle um, but there's a way of actually removing duplicate vertices and I'll remember it in a few minutes and I'll get back to it. So one way of actually doing this is wireframe, no, not wireframe, solid, is basically just grabbing those vertices, F to face them. But because of this um, mismatch in terms of the number of vertices here versus the number of vertices around here and you want the two to match up so that they mesh together appropriately pardon the pun uh, we're going to have to remove one set of vertices or two sets of vertices to drop this 36 or what's now actually 16 uh, no 18 down to 16 so we're going to drop the number of them so i'm going to link and then we can decimate it to that. Yeah, actually thinking on it, decimate's probably the wrong word. What I'm really looking for is to replace what I've got because ideally, yeah, I'd love to be able to 
simplify the topology and I could possibly get this edge cut and then do an edge slide to push it out of the way. But you'll notice that top surface gets sort of crimpled. And I could indeed actually go round and just do a slight edge side slide just to redistribute that edge a little bit. However, the problem then becomes in that it loses its consistency of um, shape because this top bit's a little flatter than, say, this bit down here. And I can actually just get that one and again, edge, slide, slide it right away, select all, and then try and remove those doubles. And I should have looked this up before I hit play again because it should be under the mesh cleanup. And no, no, not the mesh right distance, not fill holes. There was an option, and I was looking at it yesterday, and all of a sudden it's not here. Gotta love this. Gotta love it. Anyhow, I'll pause for a second and see if I can find it, not waste your time. Alright, after about five minutes of searching, I've managed to work out it's actually merged by distance. And you'll notice down the bottom, 36 vertices have been merged. If I keep pumping that number up, it starts to destroy my mesh, so obviously I'm taking it too far. But... 36, 38 is probably more than enough. So even though the top and bottom is going to be a little crushed, I'm going to go with it. What I should have done is again, 32 divisions, which just matches the number of divisions on this loop here. Then what I can do again, as I just said, is select a bunch, face it, select more, face that, and so on and so forth around the edge. And I know it's um, it's not particularly exciting work. Um, and there's going to be a sort of a warp there, so I'm actually going the wrong way. So the point I want to pick out here is I want to probably get a point that in the middle that matches up really nicely. Face that. And when the topology gets kind of complicated up here, I can actually work around it. So get rid of those two. Face. and so off and so forth and this is probably getting really boring for you guys because I'm doing the same thing again and again and again. Now these, I kind of actually want to face it that way but if I add in a triangle here it's going to end up with fairly screwy topology so I'll see how I go. And this again ties back into that point that I was making about I probably should actually make sure that the front circle matches the back circle. Back back circle so I don't get things distorted and twisted out of shape which is what's going to happen here with this model um, but I don't mind it being distorted uh, but I'd like your work to be better Good. Okay. so I want to extrude that out a little bit probably just in the X direction have it slide across um, and then I can face that and then screw it a little bit only. Face that. And you notice what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm kind of artificially building that center topology in the middle of space. So face that. And that then sort of shapes that the way I need it. And I can then continue here. And I'll pause it for a sec, finish this off, and I'll get back to you. Okay, and that's that last little bit of the fuselage. I've just finished joining it up. And I've got the basic shape of the vehicle. The only hassle is uh, this piece around here. Whoops, no, that bit. So I've just used Alt uh, click to select that edge. And I want to just basically create a space for the machine gun housing. I don't care about the what happens on the inside. And when you stop looking at stuff, it's actually not too bad. Uh, when I say that, I mean, you know, stop looking at getting precision detail. So I'm just going to extrude this back uh, just in the direction that's the y direction and then scale it down a little bit and then just hit add a face to it and then if i can find myself a model of a machine gun i can just put that in there in fact i might just want to grab these top couple of lines here grab um x y direction and just bring that forward a little bit so here just sort of here you can sort of see the shapes taking from taking place and then in here i can add a little um spot for the the rotor blades, which I'll actually model out separately. 
Um, now, I've selected the middle point here. I want to select these two rings. I actually want to grab this ring and pull it forward. I'm going to use the plus on the number pad. Control plus. Yes, control plus. So that way I can actually grab that entire section and then grab it forward and just slide it up. And if I wanted to, I could actually scale it down a little bit and then slide it forward so it sits just on the inside. So I'm creating this sort of effect in here where you can kind of make out there's something there. And I can also scale it in a little bit, uh, grab it and move it in the X direction just to slide it in to keep that arc consistent as opposed to squishing vertically, which was ten what tends to happen when you've only got half a mesh is it hits the middle point of this curve and this point and goes, oh yeah, it's there. And you squish around that as opposed to squishing around that, which is where you want to be. So that pretty much ties up the fuselage for what I'm doing. Um, and we'll move on to another chunk a little further down the track.